The buck converter or the step down converter is probably the simplest of all power converters but it is uh, used very widely uh, especially as a multi-phase buck converter in uh, uh, to power most uh, processors in computers and uh, electronics. Uh, in this video we will look at the uh, basic operating principles and uh, steady state analysis of a buck converter. We will introduce this concept of uh, small ripple approximation which uh, greatly simplifies the analysis of uh, most power converters. Okay, here is the schematic of a buck converter. Here is the input side, the output, and uh, we use a buck converter whenever we need the output voltage to be always less than the input voltage. Um, this is uh, what we refer to as the uh, power pole or the bipersonal switch, and uh, this is implemented by just one control switch, S1, and a diode for the condition that the power flow is always from this fixed input side to the output. The uh, power pole produces uh, switching waveforms which can be controlled to regulate the output voltage for example and the, um, the switching uh, frequency component in the pole output voltage that is filtered by the LC filter to uh, result in a, a steady controlled smooth DC output voltage. Now we will be doing much of the analysis of the buck as well as uh, many following uh, power converters under one arbitrary duty ratio condition. Now it is very important to remember that the duty ratio is not a constant but this is what is the main control variable to realize any control objective. So the D is varying. Um, in fact any power converter is really a feedback controlled closed loop control system. Uh, for example in the buck converter if you want to regulate the output voltage then the output voltage is compared with uh, a reference for the output voltage the required value and the error between these two is fed to a voltage controller it is processed by a control uh, control law to produce the um, control signal or the duty ratio signal which in turn is uh, processed by this PWM block to finally generate the switching signal so the main point is that D is really a variable that is what is being controlled but we are choosing to analyze at just one of those valid duty ratio operating conditions. Okay, coming back to the basic principles. When the switch S1 is turned on then we can see that the voltage uh, VA that is the voltage of this point A with respect to the ground uh, which is also the same as the voltage across the diode now this is equal to V in when the switch is on. Therefore the diode is being reverse biased by a large positive voltage V in. Therefore the diode is off. Now under this condition uh, with the voltage uh, V a being equal to V in we can show that the voltage across the inductance V l is positive. Therefore the current through the inductance I l uh, rises. Um, now at the end of this uh, uh, interval when S1 is turned off because of the um, finite current in the inductor which cannot be interrupted instantaneously so this current would force it it will forward bias the diode and force the diode to conduct now based on these two discussion points we are already in a position to draw the waveform of um, v sub a uh, even before that uh, the first waveform is q sub a uh, which is the switching signal given to the uh, the control switch s1 so when Q is 1 it means S1 is on and if Q is 0 S1 is turned off and that defines the uh, on interval and the off interval uh, T on is the on interval um, so when Q is 1 or when the switch is on the V sub A pole A with respect to the ground is same as the input voltage that is what is shown here now here um, as well as in much of the analysis uh, later on we will be assuming ideal devices so um, um, here the, uh, the, the small forward drop across the forward voltage drop across the MOSFET when it is on has been neglected. If we consider that this voltage VA during the on interval would be V in minus a small uh, voltage drop about 1 volt uh, or so. Um, similarly when the uh, uh, switch is uh, turned off uh, we have already established that the diode will be forced to conduct and when the diode is conducting um, assuming it is an ideal device there is no voltage drop across it then you get zero for V sub A during the off interval uh, but in a practical device a diode can have a forward drop of 
0.5 volts for example now uh, in that case this will be a small negative 0.5 volts uh, regardless uh, so this is how the uh, visa ba waveform looks like and by changing this um, t on duration or the pulse width we can control the average of uh, this voltage as indicated here and um, uh, clearly this waveform has a large switching frequency component and that is removed by the lc filter to produce a smooth control output voltage now the analysis of um, any dc dc converter uh, involves mostly um, three main steps the first one is um, uh, is understanding the various objectives of uh, of this power converter and um, being able to briefly describe what happens in the different intervals of operation and that is what we did for the buck converter in the previous slide the second step is to um, is to derive relationship for the um, input output relationships so um, uh, uh, in a dc dc converter it's mostly the input to output voltage relationship and mostly in terms of this duty ratio and that is what we'll do in this slide and the third step is to um, uh, look at and really understand the various uh, waveforms the voltage current and power waveforms at different stages in different components and that is something that we'll take up in the part two of uh, this video on buck converter analysis next we will derive the input output relationship we will make use of the two waveforms that uh, we saw in the previous slide and also the uh, the basic principles um, especially the old second balance across the inductor so we have learnt about this um, concept of cycle by cycle averaging so VA with a bar on top is the cycle by cycle average of uh, VA, uh, V sub A and it is defined as the um, the average of um, V sub A over one complete period or it's essentially the uh, area under the curve over one switching period divided by TS gives us the, uh, the cycle by cycle average value uh, so the area of this waveform is nothing but Vn times dTs. I should also define the uh, the intervals uh, correctly. So this interval is called as the dTs interval, and the remaining portion within one period is the one minus d times Ts. Since V sub A is zero during this one minus dTs period, the area is simply Vn times dTs and therefore the average value is uh, Vn dTs divided by Ts just uh, simply D times Vn so V sub A is uh, duty ratio times the input voltage uh, from this waveform next we will um, make use of um, the volt second balance across the inductor uh, which essentially says that the VL bar um, is zero the average voltage across the inductor in one complete switching period is zero so therefore in an average sense VA average should be equal to this voltage which is VO or we will write it more formally we will write KVL around around this loop so which say starting from this point uh, minus V sub A bar the cycle by cycle average of V sub A then I have plus VL bar plus VO is equal to zero so that is KVL in an average sense but in steady state we know that VL average has to be equal to zero in steady state therefore what we have is uh, the output voltage is simply the average value of uh, V sub A and we already derived that V sub A average is D times Vn therefore um, the output voltage VO equals D times Vn or the required uh, relationship VO over Vn is exactly equal to the duty ratio D now that is an important relationship that um, completely ca characterizes the buck converter uh, for uh, in steady state analysis uh, as a plot this is the output voltage versus the duty ratio and a buck converter has uh, a linear relationship between the output voltage and the duty ratio for a constant input voltage so the um, valid range of duty ratios are 0 to 1 and um, uh, D equals 0 the output is 0 and uh, it keeps increasing linearly till we reach D equals 1 when the output voltage becomes exactly equal to the input now 
in order to uh, help in drawing the various uh, different waveforms more easily uh, as well as to gain a better understanding of the detailed operation of the converter under analysis it is um, it is often a good idea to draw the uh, equivalent circuit of the converter valid in different operating in, in, in different operating intervals so in this case it would be the um, switch on interval and the switch off interval so the equivalent circuit of the buck converter valid in the switch on interval that is when the switch is on this uh, duration dts um, is is shown here so essentially the switch is conducting and uh, with our assumption of an ideal switch it is a perfect shot in the on interval and the diode we already established is uh, is turned off therefore it is completely open and the passive elements l and c are uh, are reproduced as they are and here is the load um, so for example um, we can draw the waveform of v sub a immediately by looking at this equivalent circuit it is exactly equal to vn Similarly, the waveform for VL, which is defined plus and minus, as shown. So VL in this interval would be um, VN minus VO. So this end is uh, VN and this end is VO. So VL is VN minus VO. And this equivalent circuit is valid only for the duration D times TS. Similarly, the other equivalent circuit valid in the switch off interval is shown here. And uh, during this period, or during this interval, S1 is off, so it's a complete open circuit. And since diode is conducting during this interval, um, and we assume ideal device, so the diode is a perfect short circuit. And then you have the LC and the load as before. So once again, in this um, um, in this interval, we can see that VA, VA is uh, just uh, uh, VA is zero, and VL would be uh, 0 minus VO it's minus uh, VO so we will be using these two equivalent circuits extensively in drawing the various uh, waveforms of a buck converter we will be analyzing the uh, various waveforms of a buck converter in the part 2 video um, and that analysis would be uh, greatly simplified by the uh, by this concept called small ripple approximation which we introduce here um, so essentially this is the output voltage of uh, a 5 volts output buck converter so if you see the output voltage on a scope at, uh, at this scale that like nearly the 5 volts uh, scale then you would uh, see the output to be uh, almost a constant DC but if you really zoom in around the 5 volts uh, uh, region um, the zoomed uh, voltage waveform would clearly show the high frequency content the switching frequency content in the output voltage uh, so essentially the output voltage instantaneously is the sum of uh, a large DC component the required output voltage magnitude um, plus uh, a small high frequency ripple um, the high frequency content is called as the ripple and uh, these are some typical values so for a 5 volts um, nominal output voltage the uh, high frequency ripple the peak to peak value is no more than 50 millivolts roughly 1% and uh, very often it can be uh, significantly lower as well um, so essentially um, since the ripple is so small compared to the nominal output voltage it is a very reasonable approximation to say that even the instantaneous output voltage is uh, just the nominal DC value that is equal to the uppercase VO so this is called as a small ripple approximation and as I mentioned this is going to be um, is going to simplify greatly the analysis of different waveforms for example the uh, small ripple approximation can be uh, effectively used to um, easily draw the waveforms for the inductor voltage and from that um, to easily calculate the inductor current um, similarly we can also use this to calculate the um, load current uh, however uh, this cannot be used um, in uh, certain applications for example uh, if you're trying to um, say come up with a design method for the output capacitance then we cannot ignore this um, um, ripple component because the C is chosen to limit this ripple to whatever is the specified value um, and also we cannot uh, use the small ripple approximation uh, to calculate the capacitor current 
so if you assume that the capacitor voltage which is same as the output voltage is just a DC uh, no change then obviously there is no current in the capacitor but there is a uh, high frequency current in the capacitor so uh, so we need to um, be careful when we apply the small ripple approximation um, so for the um, um, the schematic that we have been considering for buck converter where we have a resistive load um, the output current instantaneously is I O of T is V O of T divided by R and if V O of T is just um, the um, constant DC V sub O then the output current is also V O over R which we call as the DC output current I O uh, so this would also immediately imply that the um, um, the high frequency component in the inductor current uh, completely flows into the capacitor um, and only the uh, DC current flows as the load current um, but uh, we also need to be careful um, that um, uh, this, this, these statements are valid only for the resistive load um, whereas um, most practical loads like the uh, microprocessor power supplies these loads can be quite different compared to a, a resistive load so when we study the uh, buck converter applications in processes we will um, look at in more detail the specific uh, processor loads.